When most people go fishing, they use a rod and reel. When the inland fisheries crew from Parks and Wildlife goes fishing, they use electricity. They search for one particular type of fish, the striped bass, Moroni saxatilis, AKA rockfish and sea bass. Sea bass? What are they doing here? 80 miles inland, below Lake Livingston, in the fresh water of the Trinity River. Look at the size of this one. You gotta remember, most of the water in Texas is man-made. The systems that were there before, before the, the building of dams and, and the creating of reservoirs, we had a few large rivers and, and a lot of intermittent streams. Uh, the fish that, that inhabited those, uh, those streams and rivers w weren't always suited for what the new habitat that was created in these large reservoirs. So we had some opportunities to look at some different things. For instance, the striped bass and, and uh, the hybrid stripers and, and some of these other species were brought in to fill a niche that the native species weren't gonna fill. Striped bass, or stripers, are like salmon, a saltwater fish that spawns in freshwater, with one notable exception. When it was discovered uh, in South Carolina and some of those places, when they built some dams on some of those major rivers where stripers lived, they migrated up those streams. When they built these reservoirs, these stripers got landlocked, and they did well. So that was an indication that the stripers could survive and would do well in freshwater impoundments. So we got some of the fish, I believe they were from South Carolina, and brought them to Texas and began experimenting with them in some of our lakes. Each year, we have a large population of striped bass that congregates below Lake Livingston Dam. We discovered that population in 1981, and we've been using it as the primary source for broodfish for the entire state since then. We use our electrofishing boats, and uh, they're very effective. It's just a, a method by which we stun the fish, makes them unable to swim, and they'll actually swim towards our electrodes, and we can dip them out of the water. They remain stunned for several minutes. There's no you know, damage to the fish. They revive, and we take them back to the hatchery for our spawning process. And we can pick and choose. That's female. Yeah, that's female. Males and females go into separate tanks and the condition of each is judged for reproductive potential. Those that don't meet the requirements go right back into the river. With a little experience, you can learn pretty quickly uh, which ones appear to be eligible uh, based on the size, uh, the, the distension of the stomach, you know, how full of eggs they look, and also the vent. But the egg sample actually is the proof of the pudding. We actually take eggs and put them under the microscope we can tell how far along in their development they are, and, and then we actually decide whether they're gonna be injected with hormones and loaded onto the trailer. The process of, of catching the fish, hauling the fish, actually stops the ovulation process. The, the hormone injection begins that process again and puts it on a, on a fairly predictable schedule. We can pretty much predict when that fish will spawn. Each fish has an individual number and a color code. They're marked with a piece of flagging or maybe two or three pieces of flagging that distinguish that particular fish. And that fish can be tracked all the way from beginning to end. 110, yellow. All the males will be yellow. It's a combined effort of a lot of different people. We have a lot of hatchery staff there. We have a lot of management staff. We usually have uh, two or three shocking boats working at any one time. It's a, it's a real combined effort each year. And it's uh, a lot of, it's, it's the highlight of our year. 20.9. Kennedy River Authority, they have been outstanding since day one. They provide a lot of manpower and in inclement weather. Without their manpower and equipment, we couldn't get in and out. Uh, just any, any aspect of what we do, they're always right there to help us. The selected fish go to either the Dundee Fish Hatchery near Wichita Falls or the Possum Kingdom Fish Hatchery west of Fort Worth. Inside the hatchery, the females are sequestered in one set of tanks, and the males wait in another. Then the waiting begins. For 32 years, Eduardo Nunez has worked at the Possum Kingdom Fish Hatchery. 
At least two hours. Knowing just when the time is right to take the eggs is critical to the process. This one's just about ready. Orange is just about ready, another 15, 20 minutes. It's an artificial fertilization process. Uh, we have the males, we have the females, so we have the sex products. It's just a matter of knowing when to, to unite those two to get uh, the embryo started. We can actually time the, the best time to take those eggs and to fertilize them. If you take them too early, they won't fertilize. If you take them too late, they won't fertilize. There's a window of opportunity there, but it's not a, a wide window. So uh, it does take some experience. The fertilized eggs go into hatching jars that maintain a constant circulation of fresh water. In 48 hours, the eggs hatch into fry, which are held for an additional three to five days while their mouths develop. After 30 to 45 days in the rearing ponds, the fry have grown into fingerlings, one and a half inches in length, and are ready for stocking. Some fingerlings are the result of breeding with white bass males and are called hybrids. These go into 40 to 50 lakes around the state. The purebred stripers go into a few select lakes that are now known as striper lakes. What we found after experimenting with these animals for several years, the fish were surviving, but we weren't getting the population levels up to the, the point where they were creating a quality fishery. So we made a decision about 10 years ago to limit the, the locations uh, for striper stocking. And I believe now we're down to 11 to 12 lakes that we consider striper lakes. And we put all of our production in those 11 or 12 lakes. These are striped bass, and we take them out into open water. Uh, stripers are an open water fish, and we take them out and, and uh, put them in their own habitat that they're going to live the rest of their life in. And uh, it also keeps them away from a lot of the uh, smaller fish around the bank that'll feed on them when we stock them there. We don't touch them with a net. We try not to after we got them in the boat. And that, we feel that's just less stressful on the fish. What we've created is some fisheries so that if you want to catch a striper, you go to one of these lakes and your chances of catching one real good, and, and it, that's worked well for us. Well, the end result is that we're producing basically seven and a half million fish that would not be here otherwise because these fish, for the most part, do not reproduce naturally in the state of Texas. These are some good looking fish. Today, fishing is big business. In 1996 alone, anglers spent over $2.8 billion in Texas on recreational fishing. To help support this popular pastime, the Inland Fisheries staff produce over 20 million fish each year for stocking in Texas waters. Striped bass are just one aspect of the department's effort to make fishing in Texas accessible and successful for anybody that wants to wet a line. There he is. All right. Oh, that's a good fish there now. That's the bottom line, is uh, getting the fish on the end of that line. 